Hey guys, it's Liddy here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Atom Stack A5 M50 Pro Laser and Gray and Cutter. So, let's get started. Alright guys, so welcome back. I have the laser set up here on the Onefinity CNC machine. It's just easier for me to do the review over here. So today I'm going to be showing you guys this laser. It's a pretty cool laser. It has, has its own little touch screen. Uh, so that's a really cool feature about it. I don't want to talk too much about it right now. I want to jump right in and show you guys this laser. I'm going to be using Lightburn for software and just using that on my laptop. I'm connecting it via USB that comes with the laser. So let's jump right into the video. So this is the laser. Again, like I mentioned, it has its own touch screen. Um, here it is. It's pretty small, but it is a neat way to um, use the laser. So the laser, it basically looks like most of the other ones I've reviewed. Um, it has this Z-axis adjusting right here, which is pretty nice. It's not on the side and it's really easy to access. It has an emergency stop, which I really like. Um, it has a reset button, a power on and off button, a TF card slot, which I believe is just like an SD card, mini SD card power source plugin and USB plugin. So let's plug it in and check it out. So off the bat, I have everything plugged in. The only thing I'm not a huge fan of right here is all the wires being right in your face and right in front of the laser, but that's just how the setup is. So I have it plugged in. I have the S uh, USB connected to my laptop over here and I have light burn open. We're gonna turn on the machine. It also lets us know the model number and information right here, along with a uh, QR code. I believe it probably brings you to their website um, and gives you some more information. And this actually does say it's 400 by 410. So it's not 400 by 400, it has an extra 10 millimeter workspace. So it's powered on and I am uh, just checking out this screen here. It's a little bit hard to see, um, but I'm gonna go to settings and um, see what they have on here. Let's go to card. So you can either access your information on um, here using the SD card that you insert or you can do it over on your computer with a cord so I'm just gonna go back and by the looks of it um, that's the only things you can do on this SD card or this screen so at least you have a, one way to access your files via SD card with this screen so I'm just gonna push this to its limits that it has um, and then I'm going to hop over to the computer and um, connect it to light. So if you hear the fan in the background, that is actually the laser running. So what are we going to do is going to go to devices. We're going to do create manually. And then we're going to go to GRBL. Next, via USB. Next, and we can just name it just so I know that this is the laser that I'm using. Because I do have another laser. We're going to add in our dimensions, 400 by 410. And click next. Um, I believe the homing is in the left bottom or front left, so we're gonna do that. And click finish. Choose our machine and click OK. And we're gonna go down here and make sure we click USB. And once you actually do that, it homes itself. So I'll show you guys it homing. So you can see it's homing. Um, so now we are going to um, open up this. Uh, bag here that came with the machine and you get uh, a little brush to clean off your engravings, some wood, some acrylic, um, and a wipe along with some keychain acrylics that are black acrylic you can cut or engrave on, some tools to um, tune up your machine. Uh, but right now I'm just going to take out the wood so we can do some engraving testing. So to start off, I'm going to attach this screen magnetically to here just to get it out of the way. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to engrave something. And another thing is this uh, silver plate here does also come with, it is to put below your material so that you don't burn your table or whatever your laser's sitting on. And finally, we have this clear acrylic piece. Now this is to focus your uh, laser. So you put your material on the bottom and then you put your acrylic on top and then you set the laser exactly directly on top of this acrylic and then you remove the acrylic to then be able to engrave or cut. So I'm going to set the laser up. Um, I'm actually going to turn it on via 
light burning, I'll show you guys that in a second here. I'm going to lower the laser head so that it is kind of in the corner of this plate so that we have a better way to cut and engrave our material. So as you can see, I turned the laser on there. Um, it is not focused. As you can see, it's kind of a big light. So we're just going to set this under here and lower our laser head and then move it. I'm going to make sure it is honed. It's a little hard to see where your laser is sitting That's because it's so close, but we will make it work. So to be able to turn the laser um, on and off, you can kind of see over here that um, I have this fire button. Now, usually when you create a new profile, you do not have that fire button. So what you'll want to do to turn that on is go to edit, device settings, and then right here, you'll be able to see this button that says enable laser fire button. So you have to turn that on, mine's on. Um, and one other thing I want to mention is you're going to want to turn this fast white space scan on. And I turned mine to 10,000. Now, this laser isn't really um, secure to anything, so you might want to change it to a little bit lower. But that means it'll move faster um, between spacing, between engravings, so it will uh, make your engravings faster. So um, everything is ready. The laser is connected. So I'm going to uh, throw in my logo here. So just drag in a photo and I'm going to do a trace, which is double click and do trace image. And then it will do the outline of it. Then we can delete the actual image. And now we have this. So if I go over to cut layer or cut slash layer, you can see that it says line up here. Now, if I select this whole selection and I go down here to the bottom and change the color, you can now see it says fill up here. Now you can change these colors to be different. They can all be fill. They can all be lines. That's just um, if you want multiple different types. Like if I wanted to do an engraving and then cut this out, I would do um, one part of it to be fill and one part of it to be cut out. But we're just going to do an engraving. Um, and the way you change that mode is up here. Um, the settings I'm going to use is 1600 millimeters per minute. It's usually what I use, and then 100 power with one pass. I always run my lasers at 100 power, never had a problem. Always just change the speeds. Uh, so I will scale this down to fit on the card, and then we can do the engraving. So before I do the final engraving, I'm going to hold shift and then click the frame button. And then um, if you're looking at from the front view of the laser where that clear glass is, and I'll show you guys that here. Where this is, you will be able to see your laser um, where it's at. From where you guys are at, you can't really see it. But what I'm doing is framing where the engraving will be and if it will be on the material and in the spot I want it to be. So I'm going to set that up and then we will start the engraving. So I'm going to run the engraving now and we'll see how well it turns out. So as this is engraving, I want to talk to you guys about the power of this laser. Now, according to this sheet right here, it is a 40 watt laser. And on their website, it is compared to a 150 watt CO2 laser. And what I can already see by this engraving is it is a very powerful laser. Um, now, it does have a little bit of smoke, obviously, because it's burning the wood. So definitely make sure you have some kind of fume extraction. I have some fans here with filters um, and... In the future, I'll probably put it in a box or something with a filter plus a fan that goes outside. But it is a very powerful laser. Um, it is said to cut up to 20 millimeters thick of wood. So we're going to try that on a couple different thicknesses and densities of plywood that I have here in the shop. Um, just to test the power of this and see if it honestly is better at cutting than the Ortor Laser Master 2 Pro that I have. Um, as you guys can see here, it's a nice dark engraving, and that is at 1600 millimeters per minute. Um, and so usually to get that type of darkness, I usually have to go a little bit lower. So I'm going to try one more engraving on this type of wood at 2200 millimeters per minute. And still at 100 power and see how well that goes. And uh, then we'll just keep testing our materials and see what kind of power this laser really has. So just a quick close-up of this before we hop into the other... Um, engravings and powers. This is a phenomenal engraving. Obviously it has a little bit of burning, but that is normal for a non-air assisted laser. Um, it's nice and clean and it's actually pretty deep as well. Uh, so I'm going to flip it over and you can see it is actually almost burned through here. So it's pretty, pretty powerful. Um, I'm going to do this side again, but a little smaller at a faster speed. So this one finished and 
even at a smaller size and still at 2200 millimeters per minute it's basically the same thing you can see it almost burnt through so I could even go probably double the speed but this darkness is perfect um, obviously for a thin card like this would want to go a little bit less because you don't want to burn through the back um, but that's just great. I've never seen a laser engrave this dark at this uh, speed. So we are going to now try some MDF and some plywood, some real plywood, along with we'll try cut this stuff as well. Obviously, you can see um, it does great, but we're going to try the other materials. So too. the first one I'm going to try here is quarter inch plywood. Now, this is real plywood, $6 for a 2x2 two two sheet at Menards. So this isn't any craft plywood. It's real dense and um, I've been cutting it on the CNC so we're gonna set the height up again with our acrylic pull that out and then we'll set it up in the corner and I'm going to cut a shape out at 300 millimeters per minute with two passes so two passes is really low and 300 millimeters a minute is also very um, not very fast but not very slow so we're gonna see how well it goes hopefully we don't start a fire um, but we'll see how it well cuts. So it finished two passes and let's see, did not cut through the other side. So I'm going to scale it down and um, add a couple more passes. And then I'm also going to add this, this honeycomb grate so that when it cuts, it doesn't burn this. It'll cut all the way through. I did purchase this for my other laser, so you have to buy that if you want. Some people use cookie rack coolers. Um, just it just allows the smoke and stuff to go through instead of build up and burn the bottom. All right, so that is finished. I changed it to four passes instead, um, and you can see that crisp line. However, it did not go through. So I'm going to do one more right at the edge so you can see how far it goes, and we're going to change it to six passes. Now I've never ever cut anything like this on a laser, a uh, dialed laser like this. So I'm not surprised that it's not cutting it. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna do it on the edge just so you guys can see how far it actually gets. As it's engraving, I want to show you guys on the USB stick that comes with the laser. Um, you get these files in here. These are already um, set up uh, files, but also in here engraving machine. Um, if you click on one of these, it shows you the settings on which you need to use for certain woods. So, so there's all these different numbers on here. I'm not exactly sure what they all mean, um, but these are for photos. Uh, now we're to cutting, so um, the thickness of this wood is 2.5 millimeters. You can run it at 360 millimeters per minute, um, and the number of passes is right here. And then if we get to 5.5 millimeter hardwood, which we'll try here in a second, you can see three passes at 230 millimeters per minute. Um, it allows you to cut that out. There's images, so this is really nice for them to give, along with some acrylic. Uh, so we're going to see how well this um, other one cut out, and then we'll keep trying some materials. So you guys can see it barely made it. I made it through two layers. Um, I'm going to try one more time at a slower speed. Sometimes that works, uh, but other times it's just because it loses focus and can't cut anymore. All right, so we tested a couple of materials here. Um, I'm going to start off with the maple wood. This was a scrap coaster, and I wanted to see if it would cut it. Now, this was the first cut, and obviously you can see it didn't go through, but I wanted to see where it stopped. So at about three passes, um, it went nowhere, as you can see. Honestly, I believe this laser can do, or could cut this if it had an air assist, because if you kind of look in here, um, it's a little hard to see here on camera, but it just starts to char in there, blocking the laser from going any further. So if it was uh, cleaned out by air while cutting, I think it would work. But this was at four passes, 200 speed and 100 power. 200 is really as low as I usually go. So if it can't cut it at that speed, then it's kind of pointless. And it's really nice to see where it stops. So I wouldn't have to keep trying. Um, you can see it's not really doing anything. So the next, I did some acrylic. Now, this is the acrylic that came with it. This was at 250 speed, 100 power, and three passes, and it cut right through. Um, I, when I was watching it, it really cut through at two passes, but three passes was just um, an insurance to make sure it would fall out. Uh, the first pass or first test I did here was too fast. It kind of um, 
went through, you can little see the little glare there, but this was the best um, settings for the black acrylic. And then obviously here we have the super easy cut, one pass, 350 speed and 100 power, cut right through, really nice. And then I want to try this beefy, it's not even a half inch, it's like something between half and a quarter. Um, and I cut it with eight passes, 100 power, 240 speed. So that was pretty slow and a lot of passes, but it didn't do anything. Again, if it had air assist, maybe it would, but this is a lot to ask for a diode laser to cut, especially because it's like real plywood. Next, um, again, this was the... Uh, other plywood, this was a quarter inch, and I tried 100 power, four passes, and 240 speed did not cut through it at all. Um, and as I showed before, it kind of stops in the same spot. But one that we did have success with was this quarter inch MDF. Now, this was only at four passes, which was pretty surprising, along with 240 speed and 100 power. And it cut very nice. The insert was actually trying to kind of hard to get out because it was so snug. Um, there wasn't a big kerf on it, and it came out cleanly. As you can see on the bottom, there was no burn marks. Um, and also, there's very minimal burn marks on top here, too. So cutting this quarter-inch MDF is really nice because if you need something really detailed, cut out small. Especially, like I said, it had a small kerf to it. It's really nice to have this laser be able to cut this MDF. Alright guys, so that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and I know I really didn't focus on engraving a bunch of materials. However, the quality that we got with the engraving, just that little test card that came with the machine, satisfied me enough to know that this can engrave obviously any materials, um, just the power that it had to engrave. And I hope you guys like the materials I tested for cutting because those would be something that I would want to see if a laser like this could cut due to being a woodworker and uh, knowing that a CNC can't cut everything that is such fine detail. So testing those materials out was really nice and obviously you could tell that this laser is very powerful. Definitely one of the most powerful lasers that I've ever used um, and tested so it's super nice. And I also liked that when I tested the engraving it was when I scaled down my logo especially, it was very detailed and it was still a clear image of the engraving as well as still being a dark engraving as well. So um, definitely props to these guys for creating a great laser. Now I know that you can, like I mentioned, you can use this touch screen here with the SD card function. Um, and I know I didn't focus on that, but it's really plug in and play. You put your SD card in there and then you're able to move your machine around with this. Um, as far as that's what the instructions on the SD card said, as well as what other people have tested out on YouTube, as well as their website. So this is really cool to have, but in my opinion, I like to use the computer directly connected. It's just uh, easier for me, and uh, it's easier to switch out your designs faster than having to remove the SD card every time. So... This is still a really cool feature to have and I really like it. So some people might like that better than using their computer if they didn't have a computer in a shop or a portable computer. So hopefully you guys liked the video. Um, they are doing a sale, I believe. They did one in Black Friday. However, I was super busy with um, my Etsy store and my business and my shop finishing everything up. So I wanted to get this video out for you guys. Um, just check all the time if they have a sale. This is also available on Amazon. Again, this is the 40 watt laser. It's powerful, it's safe with emergency stop, and it's really just a cool laser to have um, to use to prototype things, uh, to put things on your business, create new things, customize things for other people. That's why I love these little lasers. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about this laser at all, let me know down below in the comments. I'll be using it for a couple more weeks and using it to do some laser engravings for my business as well because you can't always just have one laser, right? So thanks again so much for watching, guys, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.